you have to consider how much force is required to cause concussion injury. Concussion is the result of the brain, which is in a, in a fluid, right? So the brain is kind of floating in a fluid around it. So that fluid cushions it. So in order for the concussion to happen, the, the cells of the brain have to get stretched to a significant degree to cause stimulation and kind of a neuron discharge. If you look at football, okay? Football is where most of the research has been done on this. Less than, um, uh, less than 1% of all the hits that happen in football cause concussion injury. The amount of G-forces needed, because concussion, in order to have that stretch, it you need acceleration or deceleration, which is just negative acceleration. You need acceleration or deceleration, which is gonna cause the brain cells to stretch. And in football, you only hit that level of acceleration less than 1% of all the hits that happen. So you're talking about a substantial amount of force. You need 70 to 120 Gs of acceleration to hit that threshold for concussion. Um, there's obviously some give or take in there and with kids it's it's lower than it is for adults but just if we just stick with that, just kind of wrap our heads around that, you need 70 to 120 Gs of acceleration to cause concussion injury. If you look at uh, research looking at car accidents, if you're in a, in a car accident, your airbags are set to deploy at a change of velocity of 50 kilometers an hour. And if you're in the United States, that's 30 miles an hour. So if you're driving down the street going 30 and you hit a telephone pole or a parked car or something like that, and you have a change of velocity very quickly of 30 miles an hour to zero, your airbags are gonna deploy. That translates into 60 Gs through the seatbelt. Right? Remember what I said for concussion, you need 70 to 120 Gs. So you're talking about a tremendous amount of force to your head to cause a concussion injury. So you're swimming along in the ocean and you scrape your head on the bottom of the ocean. Do you think that that force was the equivalent of a car accident in which your airbags were deployed? Probably not. So I would, I would say that it's likely that uh, you didn't have a concussion just based on the amount of force that would be there. Now, I've also had patients that have been surfing, uh, bodyboarding or whatever, and getting thrown up by a wave and slammed into the bottom of the ocean and have had them suffer concussions. But I just, if you're just kind of scraping your head or a little bump like this, like this does not cause concussion injuries because there's not enough acceleration delivered to the brain to actually cause the brain to stretch and undergo the the pathophysiology of concussion injury. It's just not possible. So concussion injuries happen at high force. They don't happen at low force. Um, so that would be something to hopefully ease your mind in that. Now, the fact that you're having symptoms doesn't mean that you couldn't have done something else like jamming up your neck. So having a whiplash or any type of neck injury or dysfunction is the symptoms are the exact same as they are for concussion. You can feel dizzy, nauseous, headaches, concentration difficulties, visual discrepancies, all sorts of things can happen if your neck is dysfunctional. The amount of force required to cause neck injury or neck dysfunction is only four and a half Gs. So if you have a mild hit and start feeling symptoms, it's unlikely to be concussion because it's not enough force to make the brain do what it needs to do to cause the concussion injury. But because the symptoms are the same, I would start looking at either A, you are overthinking it and it's more anxiety than anything because you can, you can cause yourself to feel any number of symptoms just by getting anxious enough about it or looking too closely at things, it trips you up. Or it could be a neck injury that you have where your neck gets a little tight, it starts causing headaches, things like that. Um, so I would look, I would think mostly at that. If it was a major hit, then you can start thinking maybe it was concussion. If it was a minor hit, probably not concussion. Either you have some neck issues that happen at the same time, or it's just an, it's an anxiety thing that's starting to present like concussion because the symptoms are the same. They look very similar to that.